Hello and welcome back. This is Borahla here. We didn't go back as far this time as we have in the other weeks. And to tell you the truth, the comprehension approach is still commonly used in many classrooms around the world. This approach is based on ideas and research in linguistics and specifically language acquisition in children. The silent period our teacher mentioned is supposed to mimic the time when children are listening to their parents and others around them and forming connections in their brain with regards to grammar and vocabulary in their first language. Thus, there is greater focus on comprehension and less on production. Bah, silent period. I'll bet that makes teaching really very boring. Come on, children. You are going to sit here and listen to me talk at you for an hour and hope that you understand something I'm saying? After we do this for a few months, you will be able to perhaps understand the language. Oh, I'm so glad I am not a teacher using this stupid approach. Oh, come on. You know perfectly well that it's not like that. First of all, teachers do not just talk at students, they help their students understand what they are saying without translation by repeating comments and using physical actions and comments. That way, students learn what those comments are in the language they are learning. The teacher wants them to feel successful and gain confidence so they eventually will begin speaking the language as well. Second, in any given classroom, there are always learners who are more advanced than others and teachers can have those learners who have already begun speaking the language take on the role of teacher and work with those who are still in their silent period. <laughs> Sometimes I wish you had a silent period. I'll have my silent period when you have yours. Deal? What you are saying makes no sense. Sure, with young children, learning the first language, a silent period, may make sense. Children have years to listen and build up language knowledge and experience before they actually begin really communicating in the language. I can't imagine adults learning a second language to spend years just listening before they want to start communicating in the language. Well, obviously people don't spend years listening. Part of the time children spend in their silent period is building those initial language connections and understanding what grammar and vocabulary are. When working with students, they already know those things. So they just need to connect what they are learning to what they already know. That makes things go a lot faster. Teachers can also make classes fun by mixing actions to make nonsense comments that are fun for the students. Oh, <clears throat> like you know about fun. That sounds about as fun as bingo nights. I bet you have a lot of fun where you come from. Why don't you come visit me someday and I'll show you what the real fun is. No, thanks. <laughs> I don't need your help to have fun. Well, enough with the devil and the angel. While they didn't agree, they both made some very good points. What do you think? All in all, the comprehension approach has given us some very important insights into language learning process and what teachers can do to help lower students' inhibitions when learning another language. In the next lesson, We'll take a look at some of the things teachers still use for the comprehension approach and how you can apply the principles of this approach in your own classroom if you so choose. See you then.